Green anoles and true chameleons are known for their ability to change color. Research supports color changes are a response to temperature, light intensity, and emotional state of the lizard. Anoles are usually green in bright light or when they are warm. When they are cool, they are most likely a brown color. After battle with another male, the winner is usually a lighter color. Males have dewlaps, distinctive semicircular throat fans. These are extended cartilage in the throat that is used to frighten an enemy or a rival male. The skin on the fan changes to a bright yellow, orange, or red. Like many reptiles, the anoles molt. First, the skin turns milky white, splits down the back, and begins to peel away. Anoles pull off the dead skins with their mouths, eating it as it comes off. Anoles eat only live insects. They lunge at them and trap them in their mouths. They don't need to eat every day. They eat less often when the temperature is cooler. Anoles are secondary consumers in that they eat plant eaters, which are primary consumers. In Activity 7, students observe the animals in the terrariums and draw conclusions about their behavior. This activity begins with one 40-minute session, followed by continuing observation sessions every other day for 10 to 12 days. And then there is one 40-minute concluding session after Activity 8. The vocabulary introduced in this activity is camouflage and secondary consumer. From the kit, you will need, for each team of four, two magnifiers and a terrarium. For the class, masking tape to tape the colorful anoles chart in your classroom and spray bottles. You will need to supply spring water to refill the spray bottles. For session one, duplicate one copy of activity sheet seven Part A for each student. Clean copies of this activity sheet will be needed for each of the subsequent observations. For session two, duplicate one copy of activity sheet seven, parts A, B, and C for each student. Tell the students that during the next couple of weeks, they will be studying the behavior of animals earthworms, crickets, and anoles in their terrariums. Distribute Activity Sheet 7 Part A to the students. Point out that students will record observations of the behavior on all three organisms each time they observe. Students will be recording air temperature each time they make observations. You may need to review how to read a thermometer with your students. On each observation day, students will also mist the terrarium sides, plants, and dead leaves. Kathy, let's go over these questions on Activity Sheet 7, Part A. First of all, about the crickets. What, write the number of crickets that you see in each of these locations. So let's say, where do you see the crickets? Um, I saw one hide under the leaves. So I'll put one mm -hmm. where it says under the leaves. And then there was, there's one right here in the grass and he was actually hopping around earlier in the grass. So we will put one in the grass. Okay. Have you seen the crickets eat anything? Yes, I did. I saw one cricket actually uh, munching on at uh, the edge of the grass. Okay. Have you seen the crickets drink anything? No, I have not seen the crickets drink anything. I'm wondering if they're getting some of their moisture from the grass. Okay. Uh, how many crickets have you placed in the terrarium total? Uh, five. Five total. Okay. And how many crickets are in the terrarium today? Two. Just two. All right. Now let's talk about the earthworms. 
Find the earthworms in your terrarium if possible. Can you see the earthworms or their tunnels and where are they? Well, I'm seeing all kinds of tunnels over on this side and I actually see part of an earthworm on this end. Uh, and actually when we first came in this morning, I saw a whole lot of earthworms on the sides. Okay, what might you infer then about the fact that you don't see them now? Well, I think they were trying to hide from us. I don't think they like the light very much. Okay, I think that's a pretty good observation. Let's talk about anoles now. Uh, find your anole. Well, he is resting on the branch. Okay, so I'm gonna check right here where it says on the twigs or branch. What is it doing? Well, he's being very still, although every once in a while he's tilting his head, looking like he's getting a vantage point and watching what I'm doing. Okay. All right. Have you seen the um, anole eat anything? I have. I've, I saw him eat a cricket, and he was real still. He turned his head, and then he grabbed it and held it in his mouth and then started chomping on it. <laughs> okay, that's pretty exciting. And what, have you seen it drink anything? Yes, it, um, when we misted the side, mm -hmm. um, he took his tongue, which was a bright red tongue, and licked the side of the uh, glass. Oh, that's really neat. Is there evidence of anole shedding their skin or molting? Well, there is a white, stripe down the, I don't really see any loose skin, but it looks like it might be the beginning of a molt. Oh, we'll have to watch that stripe then. Is it hard to see? Well, right now he's easy to see, um, although he's beginning to turn a little bit brown. He's laying on the branch and um, I see the green on his sides, but he's got brown around his back and uh, on the top of his head is brown and his tail is brown. Okay. So then you would say that you have seen evidence of it changing color. Oh, definitely. In fact, when, when I came in this morning, he was totally brown. Wow. As brown as the branch. Maybe it was a little bit cooler this morning or maybe. Okay. I wonder if it's temperature or if it's just that he's trying to blend in with his environment. I wonder which one that is. Well, I think that one of the things that we need to do, because it could be, could be responding to any of those things, is the students will be recording, or you will be recording uh, suggestions on the colorful anoles chart. You'll be making notes on the anoles color, where it is, what it's doing, time of day, temperature in the terrarium, and possible reason for the color. Tell students that they will be collecting data on this class data chart to discover when and why anoles change color. You will also have further discussion about crickets and earthworms. On a regular basis after the observation and data collection, have students clean up by collecting magnifiers and return to the kit, return terrariums to the stations, collect activity sheets, return spray bottles to the terrarium area. Every other day for the next 10 to 12 days, give students a fresh copy of activity sheet seven, part A, and direct them to observe and record responses as they study the terrariums. At the end of the session, collect activity sheets to be summarized in session two. Help students add observations and ideas to the colorful anole chart. Distribute activity sheet seven, parts B and C. Return to each student all of the activity sheet seven, part A filled out during previous classes. Allow time for students to complete activity sheet seven, parts B and C, which is based on a summary of all activity sheet seven, part A. Elicit conclusions about cricket behavior based on the student's observations. As students offer answers, write them on the board and ask other students for evidence to support the conclusions. Repeat the discussion process about the earthworms and then the anoles. 
include the comments on the colorful annuals chart in the discussion. What you're trying to do is to get a pattern in what they, in the behavior that they have seen. What do you think students concluded about when annuals are usually green or brown, Kathy? Well, I think when we look at our data that shows when the temperature was cooler, our annuals tended to be brown. But okay. when it was warmer, our annuals tended to be green. Good, okay. Tell students that research indicates that color changes occur in response to temperature, light intensity, and the emotional state of the anole. Use the data of color change to see if it relates to the temperatures students recorded. Anoles are usually brown if the temperature is below 18 degrees Celsius or 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Write camouflage on the board and explain. When something blends in with the coloring of its surrounding, it's camouflage. Kathy, why would it be good for an anole to blend in with its surroundings? So that other animals won't find it and eat it. It's a good way for it to hide. This is a protective adaptation. How do anoles camouflage themselves? Well, they can blend in with the color of the branch that they're on, or they can and also squat down low so that they look like one piece with a branch. Okay. Did you observe the anoles eating? Yes, I did. What did they eat? Crickets. Write producers on the board and remind students that only green plants are producers. They produce food from sunlight using carbon dioxide and water. Are anoles producers? No, they're not plants. Okay, so an example of a producer would be? The grass in our terrarium. Write primary consumer and explain that primary consumer is an animal that eats green plants. Are anoles primary consumers? Uh, no, the, um, they didn't eat the grass. Okay, what would an example of a primary consumer be? Well, I saw our crickets eating a grass, so I guess our crickets would be primary consumers. All right. Write secondary consumers and explain. Secondary consumers are animals that eat primary consumers. Can we call anoles secondary consumers? Yes, because they did eat the cricket, which would be the primary consumer. All right. At this point, ask students to help you create a food chain diagram for grass, cricket, and anole. The arrow always points from the source of the energy to the consumer. Crickets are primary consumers because they eat plants. Anoles are secondary consumers because they feed off crickets, which are plant eaters. For cleanup, collect all copies of Activity Sheet Part A to be used in Activity 9. You may choose to leave the colorful anoles chart up for the remainder of the activities. Guide the students to review pages 4 through 6 in the Delta Science Reader.